Good morning. And my friends from Texas, howdy, y'all. Constance, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I want to thank NextGov as well for inviting me to speak with y'all this morning. I am excited to talk with y'all about the future of intelligent medicine. Events like this encourage open dialogue on how federal agencies are, can use emerging technologies to provide better care for patients and reduce concerns about this new technology. Now some of y'all might be thinking why a Texas former naval aviator is here today to talk about artificial intelligence, AI, in the health sector. What you might not know is I have a computer science degree from Rice University, 1985, a long, long, long time ago. But I'm proud to have started the AI caucus in the 115th Congress. AI is our future, and that future is already here. As y'all look for ways to make AI work in your agencies, in your businesses, our caucus can educate members of Congress about the importance of AI and what it means back home. Our goal is to work together with you and other stakeholders on this important issue. As we keep talking about AI, you may hear folks claim that the world is embarking on the fourth industrial revolution. And you know what? It's true. It's true. Our society is changing because of the Internet of Things, quantum computers, and AI. The first revolution was the use of steam power. We use that for steam locomotives and steam ships. And they transformed how we sent and received goods. The second was the deployment of electricity. And that enabled mass production. The third was the computer and automation revolution, which, as a computer science major, worked out pretty well for me. As we embark on this next revolution, I know AI will do wonders for our healthcare. The process of machine learning combined with AI will provide a critical tool for healthcare. Doctors and nurses will be able to serve their patients in a faster, more efficient manner. But that is not all friends. This technology will save lives. Again, this will save lives. It can help reduce inaccurate diagnoses, short recovery time, and provide preventive care to patients. A recent tour of IBM's Watson Labs in Austin, Texas, I saw our future firsthand. They are making a new system that monitors patients' steps and movements. This data can be used to determine potential health problems like bed sores or maybe a urinary tract infection. Now, there may be some doctors out there who may be concerned that this new technology will put them out of a job. I have good news for you, friends. Great news. If history does indeed repeat itself, the three revolutions I mentioned 
did not take away jobs from our economy. They created more better paying jobs all across America. And that leads us to the big question, why are we here? What can the federal government do to help with the implementation of this technology? And what changes do we have to make to encourage this innovation? In my humble opinion, there are three main areas where Congress and the federal government can focus on right now to prepare us for the future. First, we must make data more available to both the public and private sectors. AI algorithms are only as good as the data that's inputted. And right now, it takes roughly one million images for a machine to be trained to notice disparities. This type of mass data makes it hard to find and compile, but we could help reduce the overall learning time if the government helped the private sector to provide this data to both research universities and the entire private sector. This actually was a cornerstone of President Trump's recent executive order on AI. Second, we have to get ahead of the inherent fear. If you type AI horror stories into Google, you'll see countless web pages claiming that AI will be the end of the human race, of society as we know it. Folks are worried about losing their jobs, unintended biases and algorithms, and need more transparency around AI. And that's why the last Congress, Maryland Congressman John Delaney and myself introduced what's called the Future of AI Act. And this is some good news. Listen to me, my friends. This act, check this out, it's bipartisan and bicameral. The same language in the House, Senate, supported by Republicans and Democrats. On the Senate side, we have Maria Cantwell from Washington State and Todd Young from Indiana as their co-sponsors. This bicameral, bipartisan legislation is very straightforward. It would create a working group of experts within the Department of Commerce to discuss all these hot topics and make sure that we take a leading role in making AI available to our government and our private sector. And finally, Congress and the federal government must keep reviewing current past policies with the future in mind. The correct policy for today's, today's world probably doesn't work in tomorrow's world. And that's why I'm so happy we're having this discussion right here today. We need people like myself, policymakers, to work with agencies to address outdated policies and determine how we can work together to best serve the American public. After all, AI is our future. I look forward to going to that future, entering that future, with all of y'all. Thank you again to NextGov, to Candace, for inviting me to speak here. And in closing, may y'all live long and prosper. Thank you.